Hi everyone, my name is Lindaria Watts and today we're gonna to be talking about the potter's wheel. And I know God is the potter and we are the clay. That's a fact. <laughs> so today we're gonna to be in Jeremiah 18 and we're gonna start with verse one. And I think this is gonna be good. Um, I will also be in Genesis, the very first chapter two. Um, this is just for study context. And I will be reading Genesis 1, and we're going to start at verse 26, and then we're going to end on 28, just so you guys can go back and do a little homework after. So when I think about pottery, I think about the tools that a potter needs. Your basic tools for every potter is a needle tool, wooden rib, and a modeling tool, clay cutter, a metal rib, a loop, ribbon, and a sponge. Those are the tools that a basic potter needs. And there are four different types of pottery. There are earthware, stoneware, porcelain, and ball clay. And I like to think that God has us as the ball clay. We are the clay in God's hands that he's sitting at the wheel in a private room with the water and the clay and the wheel, and he's just putting us back together again. So I'm going to start Jeremiah 18. It's at the potter's house. <laughs> Verse 1. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot was shape, he was shaping from the clay was married in his hands. So the po potter formed into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. <laughs> my God. The, then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation, I warrant, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict the disaster I plant. And if at any other time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight or and does not obey, then I will reconsider the good that I had intended for it. So it's a star word that is in here. And I just love this word. Go. <laughs> G-O. Do you know how powerful that word is? If you ever get the go ahead from God, yeah, it's intentional. God is very intentional in every single thing that he does. When I think about the word go, I think about David and how David would um, ask God every time he would go to battle, God, shall I go up? And God would say, go if it was good and no, if it was bad. And he always was very intentional on listening to God because if he would go and God told him not to go, then he would be destroyed. But if he went and God told him to go, then he was victorious. So the word go with God means a lot. So when I think about Jeremiah 18, God gave him from the very first verse, he said, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord says, go down to the potter's house, go. If God is telling you to go somewhere, he's very intentional with his instructions. If we play close attention, we will hear what God is getting ready to do for us. If God tells you to go somewhere, it's because he has already paved the way and has a major plan in action. So God says, go down to the potter's house. Pottery is an art. It's a form of art. So he's sending Jeremiah into an artist's house. He's sending Jeremiah to go see some beautiful things, some very beautiful things being made. It's a very intimate and, and just quiet place where you have the, the water, the clay, the spinning wheel, and you, the potter. God is the potter. We are the clay. And God had the water right next to him because we can't survive without the living water. And he has the ball of clay and he's putting it on the spinning wheel and he's putting it all back together again. A key word that I caught when he told him to go, he said, verse three, so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working on at the wheel. Four, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was mared in his hands. Mared is a good thing. I was like, okay, where, where are we going with this? Why, why, why are you telling us that the first one was mared? 
So get this, mared is an impaired, um, impair the appearance of or to disfigure, damage or spoil to a certain extent, made less perfect, attractive, or useful. And it says we can all get preoccupied with the merit aspects of our character. So he didn't find that the one he was making was good. He didn't see that first one. So when he went into the potter's house, he saw the clay was being formed, but he also noticed that the clay was mirrored in the potter's hand. So it was disfigured. It wasn't right. It was damaged. It was spoiled in the potter's hand, but it didn't stop the potter from doing what he does best. So it said, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best. The potter did not destroy the clay. He got another pot and he began to piece it back together again my god piece it back together again five then the word of the lord came to me he said can i not do with you israel as the potter does how many times have we felt that we were too broken and too damaged and God can't come in and change us and mold us and put us back together again? How many times do we think that we're so damaged that God can't even give us the grace anymore? The Bible says that we are never too far from God's grace. Nothing that we have done can't warrant us to be saved by God. God is saying, I will piece you back together again, over and over and over again, until I get you right in the right image, until I get all of that trauma out of you, until I get you delivered from those diseases and those addictions and those abusive relationships, until I get you out of that trauma space. I will keep picking you up and putting you back on the potter's wheel and getting the water and putting you back on it and spinning you and spinning you and spinning you until all of the impurities are off of you. It said that he took the clay that was married in his hand and took it from that pot into another and start shaping it as it seemed best to him. God is saying that you're too big to be out there doing worldly things, that you are so worthy if you would only believe. He said that you run to the father again and again and again and again until you feel the love that you need to feel from God. He said the love that you're seeking from the world, you would never get. But if you just come to me, if you just come to me and you just sit down at this potter's wheel and you let me piece you back together again, you don't got to worry about the world not liking you. I love you. You don't got to worry about a man loving you or a woman loving you. I love you. And if you just sit at my potter's wheel, baby, if you just sit at my potter's wheel, come back. You may see, you may see married to the world, but to me, you are my art. And all I got to do is get you back at the wheel again. All I got to do is put you back on my potter's wheel again. That's all I got to do. I got the tools. I got the needle. I got the wooden rule of the rhythm rib. I got the modeling tool. I got the clay rider. I got the uh, metal rib. I got everything that I need to get to get you back together again. See, a lot of times we think that we're so damaged that God can't see us. God can't save us. And you know, people have been telling you, you just like your mother, you just like your father, you ain't going to be nothing. But that's just the devil not wanting you to get healed. The devil is so afraid of you getting healed up, right? Because you're going to be a force to be reckoned with. When hell wakes up, you're going to be something to wake up, be, be um, reckoned with. The devil don't want you to um, be, wake up to who you are because now the devil got to go do his job. And he got to go try to chase you down. Right now, the devil is, is living good because we're not awoken to who we are. So he's over here like, I got them. I got them. I got them. Until God wakes you up and he puts you back together again. And he gets you piece by piece and puts you on that spinning wheel. And now the devil is looking like, oh my gosh, he's up. She's up. Now we got to go do our job. Now we got to go do our job. If you don't wake up every day to be intentional, to make the devil mad, what are you doing? You have a call on your life that is bigger than you know. You are worthy. You are valuable. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are so loved by God that even hell knows it. And they're afraid that if you get an inclination of who you are, they're going to have to do their job. Do you know all of hell is hoping that you don't get it together again? All hell is waiting for you or hoping that you don't see who you are because now it's a new sheriff in town. Now you have sheep to feed. If only you knew who you were on that wheel. See, a lot of us are married. A lot of us are damaged and broken because life has dealt us a bad hand. But are we going to be victims or are we going to be victorious? We can play and, and, and do the woe is me and, you know, my life wasn't that great and I don't know. And I don't know. 
What am I going to do? And another drug and another drink and another drug and another drink and another person to lay with and just giving our bodies away as if we're nothing. If only you knew how valuable you were, you wouldn't get in that person's bed again. If only you knew how valuable you were, you wouldn't drink another drink again. If only you knew how valuable you were, you wouldn't smoke again. You wouldn't put nothing in your body again. But see, the world has distorted your image. The world has gave you a merit image. So all you see is the meritness, the cloudiness. But God is saying, in due season, I am about to give you a clear vision, a crystal clear vision. And you're about to have a divine visitation from God. And you will never be the same again. It's okay, you lost right now. But I know a God that will leave the 99 to go get that one. And when he gets that one, he celebrates like he had just won the lottery because he got that one back. Perhaps you're that lost sheep. Perhaps you have been the black sheep of your family. Perhaps, just perhaps. And God is saying, when I get you back, it's going to be a celebration. When I get you back from the worldly things, when I get you back from that addiction, when I get you back from that abuse, when I get you back from that fornication, when I get you back, it's going to be a celebration, baby. When I get you back, all I need to do is get you back to the potter's wheel. All I need to do is get you back to the living water. All I need you to do is get back to this spinning wheel so I can piece you back together again. That's it. See, you know pain so well because that's what the world has gave you. It gave you pain. And all you know is pain like Jabez. All you know is pain. But after God gets you back on that wheel, you're going to know success. You're going to know abundance. You're going to know overflow. You're going to know peace and joy. But you have to divorce your past. And when you think about divorce, it's the ripping of souls. It's ripping apart something. And you got to be ripped away from that world. Because the world is telling you that you're nothing. The world is telling you that you're nothing. So why not drink? So why not smoke? So why not go be somebody's sneaky link? Or somebody, yeah, yeah. So why not? If that's all you know. If that's all the world is producing for you. But let me tell you something. I know somebody that can save anybody. He can save even a wrench like me. Because baby, if I give you my life story, we'll be here all day. I was trifling. I was a liar. I was a cheater. I partied every day of the week. I didn't care about my body. I slept with whoever I wanted to sleep with because I said it was my body and I could do what I want. But I was lost and damaged and broken. And God says, come here, my child. Come here and let me piece you back together again. Let me heal you where you was abused here. Let me heal you where you were molested here. Let me heal you where you were raped here. Let me heal you where you were supposed to be suicidal and they thought you were going to be dead here. Let me heal you in all the broken places. Let me heal you. Let me put you back together again. Come to my potter's wheel. And God began to spin me on his wheel and put his head in the water and put it on me and said that you are mine and you are called. You are called and you were chosen for such a time as this. He began to piece me back together again. And he says, I'm calling you because you have a purpose. I'm calling you because the world thinks it's going to steal, kill, and destroy you. And when it gets done, it's going to take you out. But God says he's not going to take you out because the world did not build you, so the world cannot take you away. Man didn't make you, so man didn't break you. It can't. You look damaged right now because you don't know God just yet. But God is saying, I have made you in my image. So I'm going to take you to Genesis. And if you ever want to know who you are, or if you ever feel lost, I go back to Genesis 1. Because sometimes we have to go back to the beginning. Sometimes we have to go back to the very beginning to get what God is saying about us and to us. And whenever I go to Genesis, I think of a love story. A father and a son. A father and a daughter. And God is saying this is how much he loves us. Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make mankind, make mankind in our image and in our own likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the air and over the livestock and all the wild animals and all of the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. The image of God, he created them, male and female, and he created them. God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, 
rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and every living creature that moves on the ground. We are formed in God's image. We are formed in God's image. So if you ever think that you're not beautiful because this society has a made up image and we butcher our bodies and we butcher our faces to make us look like other people and their standards of beauty. When God says, I made you in my own image and I made you just like me in my own likeness. So I don't care what you look like to God. You are his creation and you are made in his own likeness and you are beautiful inside and out. You don't have to have the beauty standards or the norm standards of this generation. God is saying, I made you in my own likeness and I made you to be a ruler. That means dominion. I gave you rulership over every fish in the sea, every bird in the sky and over all livestock and wild animals and all the creatures that move along the ground. You were made with a power and a purpose. You were made with a power and a purpose. So if you ever don't know who you are, understand that God already gave you dominion. If you ever feel like you're facing depression, God already gave you dominion. If you ever feel like you're facing addiction, don't you know God already gave you dominion? You are so strong. You are so mighty. The devil is trying to block you out from who you are and whose you are. Because how dare you figure out who you are and whose you are. When you figure those things out, now the devil got to do his job. He can't just keep sending little demons at you that's um, coming. You know, he's been sending little sneaky links at you and you're like, okay, I guess I'll do this. He's been sending, you know, addiction at you. Okay, I guess I'll do that. I guess I'll do that. That's what he's been doing. He's been doing all of that. So... It says, God showed us exactly how beautiful we are. When he took you and he formed you on the potter's wheel, he sprinkled you in his image. It said that he created you in his own likeness. He wants you to be the best version of you as possible. <laughs> then he gave you instructions. He said, be fruitful. My God. <laughs> God is the vine dresser. We're the branches. He says, be fruitful. See, a tree that's good bears good fruit. A tree that is bad bears bad fruit. Some don't bear fruit at all. And he's saying, when you're being fruitful and you're going out and you're multiplying and you're going making disciples out of men and you're going being fishermen of men, you have good fruit and you're on good ground and you're on solid foundation. You're on all of that. And then it says... If you have bad fruit, then you're going to, if you're a bad tree, you're going to have bad fruit or rotten apples or whatever. You can always see someone that is just bad. You know, you can't be around them because bad character corrupts good character. It, that's just what it does. If you have one apple that is in a, one bad apple that is in the right batch, they're going to be rotten. So when you're on your way to heal yourself, you have to separate yourself from people, places, and things. And it might seem harsh that you're separating yourself from people, but God is saying on this potter's wheel, I have to take you and I have to consecrate you away from people because they're going to try to stop you from getting to where I need to get you at. You have a divine purpose. And just because the world has distorted your image of what I am and who I am, and you might feel like you're too far away from me. He says, I have to take you away from people. So the pruning season has to happen in your life. God is saying, I'm pruning you away from people. I'm taking people away from you because they haven't been the best. They haven't been the best towards you. They haven't made good decisions towards you. And God is saying, I'm removing you from the people that mean you no good. When you're an addict, you hang around other addicts and you all feel comforted together because maybe the world made you feel like that's the place to be right now. That's the place and you feel comfortable around these people because they all have the same addiction as you. And God is saying, I'm separating you from the crowd because I have a purpose for you. You're not too far gone. I hear you. I believe you. I love you. I want to piece you back together again. So I'm moving you from city to city and state to state. And I'm moving you from the places that you once knew because I need to get you in intimate places right now. And it said, see, he has a purpose for you. And whenever I hear people talking about what is my purpose? Who am I? What is my purpose? 
Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis. God gave you a purpose. If you're trying to figure out just a purpose, God gave you a purpose. He says, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And when a lot of people hear be fruitful and multiply, they think about pushing out babies and having children. And God says, no, I said, be fishers of men. That means every bit of knowledge that you have stored in your head, I need you to take that knowledge out and produce it to other people and give it to other people and be fruitful with other people. What good is it being stored up in your head when you know that God saved even a wrench like you, even a wrench like me? You're sitting on some knowledge and some wisdom. You're sitting on all of that stuff that can be fruitful to other people. God says, it's time for you to come out of your shell. It's time for you to come out of your shell. Don't you know that I made you in my own image? Don't you know I made you to have dominion? Don't you know I made you to be fruitful? Don't you know the power that you have? I made you, you my child. You my child. I don't care what the world say. They don't have you. I had you. I made you. I took you from the ground. I made you ashes from, from ashes and dust. And I put you on this potter's wheel. And I got the oil. And I got the water. And I put you on my wheel. And I said that you will be fruitful. And you will multiply. That is what you will be. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make you in my own image and likeness. Because you're part of me. You're bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You're all of the above. If you would just believe. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what they say. You ain't just like your mama. You ain't just like your dad. You got your own image. You got your own image. And you got your own likeness towards God. And he says that you have a mission. Now you have to get out here and feed God's sheep. You have to be out here and have the net breaking blessings. You got to get out here and cast your net to the right side. You got to get out here and get a team of people to pull the net of fish in because you are going to be a great fisherman. God is saying, if I saved you a little bit, take what I have done and produce it out to the world. Produce it out to people. Begin to speak from the highways and the byways about somebody that saved somebody like you. That is your mission. That is your purpose. God says in Genesis, he says, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over all the livestock and wild, wild animals and the creatures of the sea. He said, God created man in his own image and his own likeness and he created, created a male and a female and he created them and God blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and increase in numbers, fill the earth and subdue it. Go tell everybody. My purpose is to be fruitful and to multiply, to be fishers of men and to go get that lost sheep out there and say, God loves you. Come get at this potter wheel so he can take the filters off of your eyes and he can see that you were always supposed to be who you were supposed to be before the devil came in and told you who you were not supposed to be. See, the devil's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He tried with all his might. And some days it looked like the devil has won. Some days it looked like the enemy has won. It looks like depression has been knock, knock, knocking at your door. It looks like poverty has been knock, knock, knocking at your door. It looks like defeat has been knock, knock, knocking at your door. But God says, I knock every day. The devil knocks, but I knock harder. I knock harder. And I'm waiting on you to give me the invitation to come in. Let me in, says God. Let me in. I am the potter and you are my clay. I am the potter and you are my clay. Let me form you. Right now you are married by the world. You are damaged and spoiled by the world. But I won't change who you are. I will get another pot and I will put you back on the wheel. And I will piece you back together again. I will piece you back together again. Come here. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you did. I don't care how damaged you are. I don't care how broken you are. You're married in my hands. And if you're married in my hands, I can piece you back together again at my will. If you want to know who you are, if you want to know what your purpose is, if you want to know who God is, Jeremiah 18, Genesis 1, God says, I am the potter. And you are my clay. I am the potter and you are my clay. Sit at my right hand while I make your enemies my footstool. I prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. 
Everyone that came up and told you that you were nothing. Everyone told you that you can't do something. He says, sit back because it's about to get real blessy around here. Blessings are about to flow from the highways and the byways because you decided to change yourself. You decided to change. You decided to get peace back together again. You decided to say, Abba, Father, I can't do this thing called life without you. Come into my life and renew me. Come in, God, because I can't do this thing called life without you, God. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. God says, sit down, sit down and let me show the world what I do with my jewelry, what I do with my jewels, what I do with my beautiful children. I'm going to show the world who you are and whose you are because the world thinks that it owns you. It thinks that it's going to defeat you. It thinks that it's bigger than you. I run this. I created this world. I created you. You're in my image. You're not damaged. You're just broken right now and I'm about to piece you back together again. I'm the potter. I'm the potter. I got all the tools that I need to put you back together again. All I need is the clay and you are the clay. Come here. Let me mold you in my image. Let me mold you in my image. Let me get the water as I place you on the wheel. I put my foot on the spinning wheel and I have you on my wheel and I'm pushing the, the spinning wheel and I'm putting love, kindness, peace, joy, humbleness, understanding, peace, I'm putting it all back inside of you. You're going to love again. You're going to breathe again. You're going to get up again. You're going to get up again. I don't care what you've been facing. Little boy, rise. Little girl, rise. Man, get up again. Woman, get up again. Get up again. Get up again. You're never too far from God's grace. You're never too far from God's grace. So don't think that anything that you do can't be redeemed. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives in you. He lives in me. And if you feel like you're not loved, know that God has made you with love. With love. He loves you. And he will break heaven and earth to come get you from whatever low place you are. And he will piece you back together again. And he will put you at the head of that table. And on your right hand are your enemies becoming your footstool. And at that table is the people of your choosing. Whoever supported you when you were broken. Whoever supported your dreams. God is saying something miraculous is about to happen in your life. He's about to give you a divine visitation in your life. He's about to come sit you down at the potter's wheel. And he's about to piece you back together again. You're not lost. He knows exactly where to find you. There's no hole too dark that God can't get you out of. There's no closet too dark that skeletons can't move out the way so God can come get you out of it. He will part the Red Sea. He will dry up the Jordan River. He will stop the sun. He will stop the sun from coming in a day of war. He will give you sun by day and a cloud by night. He will do all of these things. God will do all of these things just for you. Just for you. He will hide you in the now rear of a basket and push you down and let your enemies raise you just for you to rise back up and come and tell them, let my people go. I know somebody that loves you in your broken state. If you would just believe. You are destined for greatness. You are great. That is why the devil has been attacking you and your family and your household. But you will live again. I love you all. And I pray that this message was a blessing. I pray that it touched you in your soul and let you know who you are and whose you are. And the world can't break you because the world did not create you. God created you in his image. And I don't care what society say their standard of beauty is. God said that you are beautiful because I made you in my own image and my own likeness. I am the potter and you are the clay. I am the potter and you are the clay. Sit at my wheel and let me put my living water on you. Let me put my living water on you and spin you and piece you back together again. I love you all. My name is Lindaria Watts. You can find me on TikTok under Original Pastor Lindaria. You can find me on Facebook at Pastor Lindaria. You can find me on Instagram at Pastor Lindaria. And if this message was a blessing, please be fruitful and multiply. Go be fishers of men. The knowledge that you have in your head can only go so far up here. Take it out and begin to speak. Speak God's word and feed God's sheep. They're hungry, just like you. They're broken, just like you. Get them and tell them about God's potter's will. 
and the water and the clay. God is the potter and you are the clay. Let him piece you back together again. He's a good, good father. That is who he is. And he desires to love you. That's it. That's all. So I love you all. And I pray that you have a blessed day. <laughs> have a good day. And I love you. And just be blessed always.